Hi everyone, Quiveen here from the comfort of my kitchen. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the galaxy. So we are going to be taking a look at our galaxy, the Milky Way. Uh, from this view, just after sunset in the middle of April, you might see the faint outer limb of the Milky Way over in the west. But of course, the faint outer limb isn't the most exciting part. So we will push right out into the countryside. And it is still only the faint outer limb of the Milky Way that we can see here, and not for particularly long, given that the outer limb of the Milky Way there is setting over in the west. By the time the western sky is actually dark, by the time the glow of sunlight has completely left, that arm of the Milky Way is already pretty low in the sky, which makes it more difficult to see. But we can see here with Cassiopeia just over the north, as well as Vega and Deneb, we are going to see more and more of the core of the Milky Way. The top of the Summer Triangle, Vega and Deneb, are already up when the sun goes down, but we are waiting quite a while for Altair to come up. So we can see here almost two o'clock in the morning by the time Altair is a reasonable height above the horizon. It will be another month or two before the Summer Triangle is with us all night long, because we're still not quite into the summer. So here in the middle of April, just about four o'clock in the morning, we can see that the core of the Milky Way is clearly above the horizon. The sky is still reasonably dark, but the moon is quite close to the core of the Milky Way. We've now moved from the very middle of the month, the 15th, into the 16th, as we move across midnight into morning time. If we go back a couple of days to the full moon, we can see the full moon there on the 13th, more than bright enough to completely block out the glow of the Milky Way, even without any light of the sun creeping over the horizon. You know, here, just about four o'clock, there's definitely no sunlight yet, but the light of the moon is certainly enough to completely obscure the glow of the Milky Way. We can see that even when the moon actually lines up with the galaxy here because this is later in April, the moon is, well, 77%, you know, it's still about three quarters full. And we can see there's still quite a lot of light coming from the moon, but not as bright as a full moon. And of course, as we move later into April, you know, we can see that the Milky Way is clear of moonlight there later in the month. It's completely above the horizon. And we will have a period of time where the Milky Way is completely above the horizon before the glow of the sun comes up in the east. So we can have, we have a very definite clear view of the Milky Way here a little bit later in the month. You may have noticed there, as the moon goes across the core of the Milky Way, well, that means the moon is going along our ecliptic. Really, all of the planets pass along the ecliptic, and we can bring up the ecliptic line here. So this is the line of the ecliptic. This is pretty much the sun's equator projected out into space. And if we bring up the sun, now that we're later in April, we should have a good number of planets either side of the sun. Indeed, there's Jupiter, Uranus, and if we turn a little further, there's Mars all pretty close to being on the ecliptic. We can see there Mercury, Saturn, Venus, and the Moon, all reasonably close to being on the ecliptic as well. If we zoom in just a little bit over here, uh, we should have Neptune as well. There it is, even closer to being on the ecliptic. So the ecliptic is roughly the sun's equator, projected out from our perspective. So the Earth lines up perfectly with the ecliptic. We don't line up perfectly with the sun's equator. The Earth's orbit is a little inclined. The orbit of the moon, of course, is a little different again, going around our equator rather than the sun's. And we can see how that line passes through the core of the galaxy here. Now, our galaxy is a collection of stars. Uh, if we take, you know, first off, a close look at the Andromeda galaxy, we can see how it is, well, it looks a little bit fuzzy, it all kinds of blends together here, but this is trillions of stars all going around a common center. This is even easier to see with a grand design spiral galaxy like the Whirlpool galaxy, which is way up here in the direction of the plow or the Big Dipper. And there we can see it even more clearly how there is swirling material going around a common center. Galaxies, of course, are other galaxies. 
all of the stars that we can see here, every single one of them, is part of our galaxy. And being part of our galaxy, that means going around the black hole in the centre, going around the core of the galaxy. And that includes our sun. Our sun orbits the black hole in the centre of the galaxy. So in the same way that we have the ecliptic approximating the equator of the sun, there is a galactic equator as well. Now this, I'm not entirely sure if this is equivalent to the ecliptic or if this is the actual galactic equator that the sun may be inclined with respect to. That is a little difference, a very small difference, which doesn't make much of a difference to what we're talking about here. Essentially, this plane is the line around which all of the stars we see in the galaxy orbit. The same way that, you know, Vesta here is an asteroid. In the asteroid belt, it is orbiting around the sun. But it's pretty inclined with respect to the ecliptic. We can see there are plenty of stars who seem to be quite far from the ecliptic here. But of course, they're orbiting around a massive black hole. We're all still orbiting roughly in that direction. So you can see that the ecliptic based on our sun, doesn't line up with the equator of the galaxy. So this brings me to a tool that Stellarium offers called the angle measurement tool. I've been told that the angle at which the Milky Way and the ecliptic here cross is about 60 degrees. And you can see this narrower angle, this more ob uh, oblique angle. This angle here does look like it could be around 60 degrees. You know, it looks a little bit more than 45 degrees to me. And of course, then this would be the, ob uh, the opposite obtuse angle uh, filling out the other half of the circle. So we've got a 260 degrees there at 120. So that leaves behind 240. So that'll be about 120 degrees on either side. That's roughly the angles as in, um, well, the angles of a circle. When we measure the angles of objects in the sky, we're measuring degrees of arc. The degrees of arc, the angle measurement, isn't a default component of Stellarium, so it needs to be turned on. If we go into the configuration window, which is uh, down here with the wrench and over to the plugins, you'll see that the angle measure is here, but it needs to be loaded at startup. So we'll click that and then we will restart Stellarium. So there we go, that Stellarium restarted. So we'll very quickly move it into nighttime first off. And just down here is our angle measure where it wasn't before. What this does is it measures the distance between two points in the sky. Just like this, <laughs> 9 degrees, 9 minutes and 40.13 seconds of arc. And that's the important thing. These are... Well, it is an arc measurement. So just to give an example, measuring from the uh, top of the plow to the North Star, this is how far away those two are, about 28 degrees in the sky. Uh, no matter what way we turn around, uh, maybe it gets a little bit curved there. You might see that it's a little bit curved, but that line isn't going to get too curved, uh, regardless of how we turn around, because of the way it lines up with our uh, coordinate system. So here we go. We can see that those lines there, at least close to the plow, at least close to the North Star, when we're looking at the North Star, they actually look pretty straight. But when we start looking over here, there we go. There are some curved lines measuring across here. Uh, so let's try measuring from the cart of the Scorpion, uh, Antares, over to the bottom of Corvus. Oh, there we go. Uh, measuring into Corvus you can really see the curvature of that line. And that's because we are sort of looking at the inside of a curved surface here. Now, of course, really space is this infinite void, but one of the best ways to visualize space is as a curved dome over our heads. It doesn't matter too much to us if Deneb is way farther away from us than Vega. We just want to know how far apart they are in the sky. And 23 degrees, 52 minutes and 25.63 seconds seems to be how far apart they are. You can't really say that they're a certain number of meters apart. Uh, as we zoom in, you know, that measurement seems to get bigger. Um, and as we move around, you know, it should curve a little bit because it's not exactly a parallel, but the curve is over a big surface. So it seems pretty subtle. Either way, the angle measurement that we use in Stellarium 
isn't going to help us measure the uh, angle at which our equator and the equator of the galaxy line up. Uh, if we bring up those markings again of the ecliptic and the galactic equator, uh, we'll move back out into the countryside because, of course, we won't be able to see the galaxy, any part of the galaxy, otherwise. So let's get that out there. And if we come along, well, of course, the moon is going to be in the way this time, but that's not too bad. We can see that, well, this angle measurement isn't going to measure an actual angle. Two degrees there. That's how far apart they are in the sky with reference to the 360 degree sphere in which we live. But for the degrees of arc of a circle, that's definitely closer to 60 degrees than 2 degrees. Of course, this angle measure won't tell us the exact answer, so someone else might have to uh, tell me instead. But hopefully you enjoyed this video investigating those two aspects of Stellarium and our sky. If you did enjoy this video, please do like it. And if you'd like to read some of this information, you can do so on my website, quevingscontent.ie. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you back here next time.